Hey everybody, it's Migraine Pets. I'm William Green. And uh, I got a really good response last week from my just random chatting about different things related to orchids. So I'm going to try it again this week. I have actually a few things to share with you guys. So the first thing is that I uh, talked about the project to uh, name the Catlia Rex clones F, uh, using Quechua words because they come from the uh, area where the Quechua people live. And uh, I finally got in touch with someone who could really help me out with that. And his name is uh, Erwin Salazar Garces. He is a professor of astronomy and the director of the planetarium in Cusco, Peru. Cusco is the historic capital of Peru. It was the capital of the Inca Empire. However, when European colonists, conquistadors, whatever you want to call them, came, they dismantled the Inca Empire to such a degree that there is nothing, nothing left of the ancient Incan buildings. And what's so fascinating about Mr. Salazar is that He's an expert in ethno ethnoastronomy and archaeoastronomy. So he understands at a deep level how the Incan people used astronomy to dictate their decisions about planting and harvesting and festivals. And they had all of these buildings that were designed to reflect the movement of the stars and the sun and the moon and all that kind of stuff. So all that stuff was dismantled. But um, his he's actually got um, a lecture in Spanish on YouTube where he talks about how um, a little formation known as the Pleiades, Pleiades, Pleiades? Uh, which is a star cluster, um, had, had great importance for the Inca people. Anyway, so... Inca, the language of the Incans is, today, uh, it is Quechua. And I wanted to use those words to name my Catlia Rex. And I think it's going to be a really cool project. Because uh, Mr. Salazar is such an expert in astronomy, and as I learn more about the Inca people and the Quech how Quechua, you know, it relates to... Quechua is the modern form, but the Inca people, this is like centuries after the Incas. These are the descendants of the Incas. But astronomy was such an important part. Now I'm wondering if I shouldn't use like Incan astronomical terms for the different plants. So anyway, still kind of in the works of what, what words we're going to use. Uh, let's see. Second thing. Oh, so 2015, I'll go to visit a grower uh, who is really, really, really just always posts fantastic stuff. Um, and uh, I went to visit this grower, and she's an older person, and uh, she, you know, just visiting her greenhouse, I wasn't expecting, I was just wanting to see, and she sent me home with a handful of plants, uh, really, really nice plants. In fact, if some of them, if you go back in my older videos, the Paph Annabelle Shin was hers, uh, the big Maxillaria tenuifolia, which ended up being a huge basket of red flowers. Um, that was from her. Uh, my Momodia Jumbo World is from her. And uh, she actually offered me a plant that, at the time, I thought, you know, it's it's too much. I've already, you're giving me all this stuff. Uh, you know, please, I, I, it, it's fine. I, I don't need any more plants. So I turned her down. So after she told me what the, after, uh, you know, that I kind of got a little bit curious and went and looked online and, you know, looked at, try to find this plant that she was, that she had offered me. And I realized that it was nowhere to be found. And as time passed and I became more and more interested in orchids and more and more involved in online message boards and social media and stuff, to this day, I have never seen it anywhere. 
So, well, that's not true. I, I did do one internet search and found, it did pop up on one message board, but it was, it was a post from like 2011 or something. Anyway, so she had offered me this super, super rare plant and I had turned it down and I was very upset with myself for not just taking it. It wasn't a very big plant. I should have just taken it. Anyway, this had been eating on me for years. And finally, last week, I, I felt like, you know what? I should just go ahead and email her and just say, you know, apologize for not taking it when she offered it to me and asked if she would, you know, have a piece for me or something like that. So I emailed her and she emailed me back, emailed me back and she said, yeah, I tried to get you to take a piece. You should have listened to an old lady. But um, she said, I'll be happy to send you a couple pieces. So I am super thrilled uh, about getting this incredibly rare plant, at least in the United States. I just, I've just not seen it anywhere, anywhere. Like nobody posts pictures of it. Nobody, I mean, in on Instagram, YouTube, I have not seen it anywhere. Like I said, one orchid forum, I had one post about it that was posted nine years ago, but that's it. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you what it is until I get it, and maybe, maybe maybe not even tell you what it is until it blooms. But it seems like I'm gonna I'm gonna get a piece of that. Of course, until I have it in my hand, I can't get too excited. But she said she would uh, send me it in the mail overnight, like an overnight mail service, like FedEx or something, after the holidays when all the mm, mailing and everything dies down. So that's super exciting. All right, I gotta look at my notes because I keep forgetting what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. So the grow tent. So what's going on with the grow tent? What's the what's the idea here? Um, I am going to get a third light, and I'm going to change the lights from hanging this way to hanging this way. So it'll be one, two, three, and I'm going to raise them about oh I don't know up to here. And I'm hoping that with more lights, but further away from the plants, the amount of light reaching the plants will be more or less the same, but the lights won't be right here in my face. I cannot tell you how many times I have bumped my head on this light. Also, some kind of one of the finishing touches I need to do for the grow tent is to get the watering automated. And so in order to do that, I am looking at some Mist King systems um, my friend Joe actually gave me, well, we traded uh, some stuff, and I got some Miss King uh, stuff, some parts, uh, to get an automatic, automated watering system in here. Like a, The idea is that there would be four mist heads, like one, two, three, four, in each quadrant, maybe. I'm just thinking here out loud. And each mist head would spray and hopefully cover its quadrant of the grow tent and then I would just come in periodically and just spot water any plants that seem to be in a dry spot so there'll be quite a bit of a adjustment phase tweaking getting things quite uh, right actually one thing Joe told me was that make sure that the fan is on a timer and that the fan switches itself get the fan switches off before the sprayer turn on so that this fan doesn't blow spray everywhere and I said oh, that's a very very good idea so um, that's kind of in the works. The, the, ultimately, I would like for this to be a pretty self-sustaining uh, grow tent. Uh, that way, if I do leave for any amount of time, I don't have to have a plant sitter come in, you know, three, four times a week, especially during the hot, dry summer, to make sure everything is watered. You know, I could maybe have someone come check once a week or something. So that would be awesome. All right, what's next? Sorry, I keep forgetting. Oh, yeah, okay, this one's a big one. Um, so, Catlia Rex Project. As you guys probably know, my, my goal right now, the Catlia Rex Project, is to increase awareness of this plant, to increase the number of Catlia Rex that are available in the United States, and uh, to maybe further its breeding lines as well so that, you know, here in the United States we can have as many beautiful forms of Catlia rex as they have in Peru, for example. They have 
you know, there's the Delicata form, there's a Rosita form, there's the Ayacucho, there's the Moyobamba, there's the, um, you know, and these are all different color forms. There's some that have yellow splash petals, some that have pink splash petals, some that are more yellow, some that are more red, some that are more purple uh, in the lip coloration. Um, now, we just don't have any of that in the United States. None of that variety. Zero. And I just wish I would like to make that happen here. So, um, so here's the deal. So, I've got... It looks like last year's seed pod... Um, it looks like the seed from last year's seed pod is going to end up producing about 20 flasks of Cattleya Rex with, you know, average... 20 plants per flask so 20 times 20 400 Cattleya Rex seedlings potentially on the way in the few in the next year no two years probably a year and a half and uh, I'm not sure what to I'm not sure what to do I'm not sure if I should Right now, the agreement that I have with one of the flasker, I actually split the seed into two different flaskers to kind of, as kind of an insurance policy for myself. But basically, one flasker, I went ahead and said, this is proprietary. I want these seedlings all for myself. And so they're going to flask only a certain number of seeds, and those are going to come to me. The other flasker, I had more of a loose arrangement with, and... Um, we ended up deciding that um, the other flasker would, I would get one flask for free and then they would sell the rest on eBay. And I'm struggling with how, knowing if that was a bad move on my part. A lot of people have said, oh man, if you want to make money on these plants, you got to have all of them yourself. And I'm like, okay, that's the problem. It, the, the goal never was to make money. The goal was to increase awareness and availability of this plant. So is it better for me to just buy all of the flasks, even if there's 20 of them, pot all the little seedlings up, growing, grow them out a little bit to be stronger plants, and then just, you know, sell those to people like you who are interested or should I just let this other seller, you know, just do what we agreed and just, you know, sell the rest of them on eBay and let, let those little plants just go out there and whoever gets those flasks, then great. I'm not really sure. I'm having, I'm struggling with, it. was that, is that a good idea, bad idea, what? I guess it's not clear to me what the goal is. Like I said, I, the goal was never to make money, but then when people say things to you like, but you can make a lot of money on this. It's like, well, gosh, that I don't I don't know if that's I don't know if that goal. I think making some money would be good for sure, but it's still not the goal of the project. The, I didn't get a bunch of Cali Rex to make money, right? So I don't know. I'm 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 curious what you guys think I should do. Should I buy all the flasks and end up with like 20 flasks on my, on my, from with, you know, here with me to sort out and pot and figure out and distribute? Or should I just let some of the flasks go on eBay from this other person um, and, you know, they get, they get the money for, you know, flasking the seed and housing them for two years while they grow up to be, you know, seedling, mature seedling size. All right, and the last thing that I wanted to mention was, oh, lights out. I guess I'll have to end this episode now, <laughs> and we'll have to talk again next time. All right, guys, well, thanks for listening to me ramble, and uh, I'll see you next time right here on Migraine Pets. Bye.